Depstech have kindly sent me this DS550 to review. Now, previously on this channel, I've reviewed the DS300. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned at the end and I'll pop a link. Uh, I'll also put a card on screen. So let's take a look and see what's in the box. It's a pretty decent case actually that it comes in. Uh, really quite impressed by that. So let's take a look inside. Now, quite nice padding that you get all around that to protect it. So we've got the display unit here. Looks very nice. Uh, it has a premium feel to it. Looks, looks really good. Uh, it's very solid and well made. Uh, I've got light around the back there that you can use. So I'll turn that on. Oh, in fact, it turns on without the main unit and the main display being turned on. Uh, so that's quite handy. Uh, it's not mega bright, but it's bright enough. Turn that off and just take a look at the rest. Um, so you'll notice there's no cable attached to this. So unlike some of the other models, you connect the cable into that screw it in and uh, then you're good to go. Then we've got a USB-C charging cable here, a user manual, some instructions about connecting the, uh, the snake cable into the unit, a couple of accessories here. So we've got a magnet attachment and a hook. So let's just pop those out. There we go. So a very simple hook there. That, that fits on the end of the endoscope. Uh, and then we've got a magnet here as well. So in previous videos of the DS300, uh, the problem with the magnet attachment is it's really shiny on one side. So I've actually already applied the fix that I came up with last time. I've put a tiny piece of black material on this shiny side and it really helps for visibility uh, in the dark. It won't shine back off that as much and you can see around the edges, which is dead handy. Okay, put those back in the pot. Now it doesn't need a mirror. Um, so some of them come with a mirror that allows you to see at a uh, 90 degree angle. And uh, this one doesn't need it because it's a dual camera endoscope. So let's take a look at the cable. So you've got that end for connecting into the display unit. Very sturdy. And then the camera on the end here, you can just about see that this is a nine LED light on the end and it's pretty bright. And then you've got the camera obviously on there. So that's a five megapixel camera just in the end there. And then we've got a two megapixel camera on the side there and it's got its own light. So that's very neat, isn't it? So the head of the cable at maximum is about nine millimeters. And then you've got about seven millimeters on the rest of this. So this is a really stiff cable compared to some others. Um, so it can be properly positioned where you need to get it. Um, you can also push that in with quite some force. Um, it, it's not gonna buckle as you push down on that at all. Um, it really does stay put. So like I say, it's three meters long, so it'll get you where you need to. Um, and obviously with the camera being on one side, uh, that may cause you a problem if you're trying to show it down something and then the thing that you're trying to maybe look at is on the opposite side. But actually, because the cable's so stiff and strong, uh, what you can do is twist the cable round and that twists where the camera is pointing, this secondary camera. Um, so that's a possible uh, little tip there is to, uh, to get that positioned by turning the whole cable. Um, it'd be handy if there was a camera on the other side, and I know there is a triple camera model that's available in some countries. Uh, so take a look, look at that if you're interested. So to get this connected up, what you have to do is look at the connector here. There's a, a small cut here, and that corresponds to the red dot on the display unit. So we'll move that around. So red dot, you can feel that slide into place and then screw down the collar and then it's in. And there we go. So turning it on, just hit the power button and hold it. And then the whole thing boots up pretty quick. Now this is a five inch display. It's an IPS screen and uh, it has really good viewing angles. 
And I've seen others where it's an LCD screen and the, uh, the viewing angles are pretty terrible. Um, this one, you can pop it on the ground uh, whilst you're inspecting something and uh, you can view from all the angles. It's not awkward at all. Underneath here, you've got an SD card slot. Uh, it comes with 32 gig of uh, memory on a micro SD card. It's really nice that it comes with that. Uh, and then we've got a USB-C charging port. So it's great to see uh, all the manufacturers now slowly moving over to USB-C. Um, and a full charge of this should give you about four hours of operation. Um, when you're transferring videos and pictures to your PC, you can either eject the memory card and put it into a memory card reader, or you can connect via the USB-C cable and transfer the pictures into your PC that way. So the brightness can be turned up and down uh, using the buttons here. So it's three levels off, lowest, medium, high. Camera compensates when you're using the uh, LEDs. So uh, just when you're using it, find out which uh, light level is most suitable for what you're doing with it. The uh, little button here uh, with the circle arrow on it uh, flips the orientation of the display by 180 degrees. And then we've got this button here to switch to the secondary camera on the side. And there it is. And it's got its own light levels. So you can bring that up or turn it off entirely. There is no dual view mode. So on some models, you can do a split screen. So one side shows the front camera and the other side shows the side camera. Unfortunately, that's not in this model, but pressing that button will switch to the side view. And it's pretty quick to switch between the two. You can see there. Long pressing the camera button at the top there, that'll turn recording on. And you can see at the top of the screen here, uh, that recording is going. And then you press it again to turn it off. And if you just do a short press, that'll take a picture of whatever you see. And then if we long press the OK button, that goes into the gallery view. So I've got the pictures that I just took and pressing down cycles through them. So you can see a bunch of test pictures and you can also see the video that I recorded earlier as well. So that's kind of handy that it's all in one unit. No need to hook it up to a PC if you want to review those recordings. Press the uh, back button there to come back to the main menu with the cameras enabled. So let's take a look at the footage from the camera. So this is from the main five megapixel camera. It records at 2560 by 1920. So that's a four by three aspect ratio. So not widescreen, but it is pretty detailed. And because this is a 4K video on YouTube, you can kind of get a really good idea of how crisp this appears. Now the focal length is three centimeters to eight centimeters. So obviously when it gets too close, it will go out of focus. Switch into the side two megapixel camera. The video comes out at 1920 by 1080. So standard 1080p video. Uh, it is widescreen as you can see here. And the video is pretty crisp too, as long as it's in focus. So it has a focal length of two centimeters to six centimeters. And returning back to the five megapixel front camera, uh, we can take a look at this manual and what I'm doing is just moving in slowly across different uh, focal lengths and you can kind of see how crisp the text is in the center and maybe spot a little bit of fuzzing around the edges on the edge of that lens there. Okay, so let's go through some pros and cons. So we'll start on uh, some of the negatives. When you're recording, uh, you can't switch between the two cameras. Uh, I think that's a bit of a shame. You can, um, you can change the, the angle, so uh, flipping it 180 degrees, uh, but you can't change from the, the main camera to the side view uh, when you're in recording mode. Bit of a shame that. 
The cable may be a bit too big and chunky in some situations, but it depends on what you're using it for. You may actually see that as a, as a plus point. Uh, having this cable so rugged means that you can get it into places and really push down and get it to, uh, to where you need it. Um, so maybe that's a plus for you. So that one uh, really depends on what you're going to use it for. The edge of the camera on the main view is uh, a little bit blurry around the edges, uh, really quite sharp at the centre, uh, but I did notice that the, uh, the edges are slightly blurred. Um, and the only other con I could really think of is it's a tiny bit expensive for occasional use. Um, but obviously if you're going to be using this all the time, it's quite a nice package that you get for full the money and the quality is high. So moving on to the plus points, it comes with a 32 gigabyte micro SD card, which I think is great. Plenty of room for recordings. Uh, it is useful having two cameras. Um, three would be better because then you've maybe got a view out of the other side. And it's a real shame that you can't do a split screen view on this model. I think that would have been really useful. Even though it has the dual view on uh, just the one side, the, with this cable being so rugged, as I mentioned earlier, you can twist the cable and then that will, should move the camera around to where you need it. It's very good build quality. Uh, certainly on this main display, it doesn't feel cheap. Uh, and the, uh, the cable is very rugged. So very happy with all that. It's great that it comes with this decent case. Do like that for portability and uh, keeping it all in good condition. I also like the fact it has that light around the back there that even works with the display turned off. Could be useful. And this, the screen on this is great. The, uh, the viewing angles are superb, especially compared to uh, some of the LCD screens I've seen. So uh, that really does make a difference. If it's on the floor and you're trying to view it from a, an odd angle, uh, you're still going to be able to see it. So that's cool. I do like the fact that the cable can be detached from the screen. I think if Depstack also did like other cables, that could be really interesting. So if you could have a really thin version of this, a bit like you do on the DS300, uh, um, and have it being able to connect into that display and keep both in the box, I think that'd be really handy. Uh, and it would cover the situations where this cable is just too bulky to get through a small hole or whatever. I think that would be a really cool thing for the product development people to, uh, to work on. The attachments are fit for purpose, so you get that hook uh, and the magnet. And as I mentioned earlier, the magnet needs slightly modifying if you want to be able to see around the edges and the, uh, the lights not shine back into the camera and uh, restrict the view. I think it would be good if they could maybe position the magnet to the side so that you can see right down uh, where you're looking, because um, at the moment the magnet's right in the way. Um, but yeah, with that modification, that does help a bit. I think it could just do with a slight redesign there. So overall, the DS550 is a good buy for anybody that needs a heavy duty inspection camera uh, with a really good display. Take a look at my other videos if you're interested in the DS300 and you can see how that compares. I am hoping to do a proper comparison video between this one and the DS300 in the future. So subscribe to my channel if you want to be alerted when I've done that. If you've got any questions, then let me know in the comments. Otherwise, see you next time. Thanks for watching.